Hey guys, Heather here from Naturally Present. Thank you so much for joining me on another episode of the Naturally Present Life series. My name is Heather McGregor and I am with Naturally Present Coaching. So beautiful day out here in British Columbia where I live. Uh, very, very sunny. And uh, I noticed that a few of my neighbors are out mowing their lawns. So if you do hear any strange sounds, it's probably just a bit of lawn care that's going on out there. Super excited to be here today. Uh, I do have a special guest that I will be welcoming in shortly. Uh, but just before we do that, I wanted to speak a little bit about coaching because I've been asked this question a few times. Because for those of us who are coaches and are in the coaching industry, it's very um, prevalent. It's very common and experiential and it's in a lot of our languaging. But for a lot of people, coaching is brand new and it's growing and it's um, people are learning a lot more about it and hearing the word more, but not necessarily understanding what it is. So I thought I would just take a few minutes to sort of talk about that um, and to sort of clarify a little bit of the difference between uh, what a coach does and maybe perhaps what a counselor does. There's a lot of similarities, but there are some differences as well. So a coach and a counselor are really, their goal is to create a safe uh, space or um, a supportive environment or a container, I like to think of it, for you to do the exploratory work. And the exploratory work can be looking at uh, the things that you desire to have in your life, your goals. It can be looking at healing past wounds and traumas and healing um, events that have happened to you in the past so that it's uh, understanding the impact that it's having on your current uh, reality, which also then impacts your future reality. So it's about creating that space and that container to do that work. Now, a good coach is um, someone who's going to be willing to ask the really tough questions, but ask them at the right time. That is a key component of working with anyone, really, a coach or a counselor. But that is really what coaching is designed to do. It's designed to uh, push you up against your limits and then find the way beyond those limits. So it's very um, action oriented. It's about really getting present with yourself. It's about really getting present with all of your thinking, getting very present with your subconscious programming, the uh, unconscious uh, beliefs that we hold, the core beliefs that we hold that sometimes hold us back from creating the thing that it is we desire in our life. And oftentimes it holds us back from even taking that step towards it. Sometimes we take those steps and then suddenly we lose the momentum or we lose the confidence. And so the coaching is really about getting you just beyond that hump. And it's really about being able to ask and reveal those things in the moment so that you can take the necessary steps towards what it is you're trying to create in the future. So it's really about setting goals and then working towards achieving them with an action plan that you and your coach can develop together um, but also it provides a lot of accountability. So you suddenly with a coach on your side, you have someone that you, you voice to them or even write down what you're going to do, what your commitments are. And then you have someone to check in with to see where did you get to, where did you not get to, and let's have maybe have a look at why you didn't accomplish those things uh, and see if there's some way or some area where you have some core beliefs that are holding you back that we can maybe help you to move through. So in a nutshell, that's really what coaching is. It's being asked the right questions at the right time within a very safe and secure container where you can do that deep exploratory work. Now, it's not really about learning. Um, it's not really about bringing up your past. It's not really about finding the coping mechanisms and things like that. It's really about allowing those things to unfold if they arise during your sessions or after you've worked with your coach as you're, as you're bumping up against the blockages or the things that are coming up for you. It's, but it's not really about bringing all that forward. It's about being very, very present, understanding where you want to go, finding the tools and the techniques and asking the right questions to help you get there with some clarity, with inspiration, and understanding that oftentimes those core beliefs that we hold are not based in reality. They are based on old programming. They are based on old beliefs. They are based on things that the mind is using and feeding to us in order to keep us in what it perceives to be a safe space because growth isn't always, it doesn't always feel safe. It isn't always comfortable. It pushes you against your comfort zone so that you actually step out of it. And that's really growth. If you're not growing, you stay within your comfort zone. When you're growing, you have to step outside of your comfort zone. And stepping outside of the comfort zone can be 
a little daunting, a little uncomfortable. It can seem a little bit scary. But really, if that's what you want in life, working with a coach is designed to get you there a lot quicker. It's designed to um, help reveal the programming and the beliefs that you hold and help reveal the blockages and the things that you put in your way, the self-sabotage, all of that, and then provide a quicker method to get over them, a, um, a clear and quick path to see those things and allow them to be there in your awareness, but to not let them hold you back. So I hope that's been helpful. It's really important to find the right coach to work with. So for me, it's really about finding someone that I resonate with. And yet, oftentimes we will seek out someone who is very much like us. But sometimes the most powerful coach for you might be someone who is complete opposite to you because you're really learning to stretch who you are. If you find someone that you're super aligned with, sometimes that's not what you need. Sometimes you need to see people that are in perhaps the future role that you're hoping to get to. So if you can find people that are there, it's almost like a mentor relationship then. Now that's not to say that you shouldn't be aligned with your coach. Sometimes that's what you need as well, but I just want to bring that into the conversation. So if you are looking for a coach, someone to help you on your journey, get clear with yourself about what you'd like and then ask the universe to show you the right person and hopefully um, you'll be open enough to receive and then you guys can start to work together. I do have a fantastic coach that I'm about to bring into the room. Um, I'm just gonna go and take a look and see if she's with us, two secs. So I'm super excited today to welcome Violetta to the show and she has a beautiful last name, but we've both agreed that I won't even try because it's a little bit tricky. <laughs> so I will let her introduce that to us in a moment. Um, so Violetta is a success coach for coaches, which kind of exciting title, I have to say. She delivers high energy coaching to help clients uh, to show up authentically and to grow a soul aligned business so that they can make a difference in the world. Have I got that right? Oh yes, definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. You're also the founder of the Facebook group, uh, successful coaches club. Yes. Right. And you also have a few programs. I think you have two programs that you currently have running. Yes. Uh, especially I'm excited about the one we are starting on Monday. Um, be you get clients for new coaches to authentically simplify marketing strategies, put themselves out there and get clients. Yeah, perfect, which is something we all need to be working on, right? Yes. Yeah, awesome. Um, so quite often you will find Violetta running workshops, doing live videos, connecting beautifully with people on social media. And I say that from a personal level because I, I see her doing that all the time um, or out enjoying nature. So you said hiking, climbing the mountains or running in the fells. Now I've heard the word fells, but I'm going to be honest. I had to Google it to understand exactly what it was. So I've, <laughs> whereabouts are you in the, in the world? Where do you live? In the Peak District in the UK okay. and around me there are uh, moorlands and fells so they are very very small mountains okay. um, some are rocky some are just uh, like a grassy hills you could say hills really yeah. um, and that type of uh, running is called fell running in England okay very cool it makes me think of fairies and very magical world <laughs> <laughs> Mm, I don't think I look like a fairy when I'm running <laughs> up the hills, but uh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. And uh, for any listeners here, I would love if you could please pronounce your full name for us. Oh, thank you for having me here and for your lovely introduction. I'm Violetta Widrich. And don't worry, uh, when my partner heard from my dentist, oh, what's her surname? He quickly switched the phone off. <laughs> <laughs> so seriously, even he struggles still to, okay. to pronounce that. Yeah, nice. All right. So Violetta, in your bio, you mentioned that your journey, your own journey of self um, development and self discovery started about five years ago when you had gone through a divorce and you had uh, lost a, a role in leadership and that you kind of went a little downward towards rock bottom. <laughs> but that now you've learned to love yourself and to live in alignment with your values, which has led to um, building a successful coaching business so that you can make a difference in other people's lives. So I would love if you could share with us a little bit about your journey and um, I'd love to hear the lead up to that, but also that moment where you decided to switch from going down to rising back up. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me about this journey. 
because it's so easy to underestimate of you know how far we've come already and and actually i believe that the, the sharing our low moments can give many people a hope yeah. um, so my life was very boring i had boring unfulfilling jobs um admin jobs uh, i was climbing the corporate ladder uh, but when i got to the point of working as a team leader uh, i still didn't have that fulfillment right. um I, I was like a people pleaser i was studying chemistry actually just oh. so my dad was proud of me can you imagine um i didn't have any hobbies during the every weekend i was just getting drunk probably because i i just hated my life so much but on facebook you know if if people looked at my pictures you know holidays and everything it was looking like you know beautiful yep. life yeah. um and i slowly started damaging everything i got divorced and uh, i stopped enjoying the job i had even you know that there was possibility to keep growing right. uh, and at the time when I actually took that decision oh I'm going from here I got made redundant um, it's yeah. the English uh, British word redundancy so it's just being laid off from the job because they don't need this position anymore right um, and what happened then? Um, I just got depressed. I hated myself because I thought that I had everything I wanted, happy marriage, and I just, I didn't understand myself. Like, how could I just don't like my life anymore? Um, and that, that's, that was that lowest moment when I realized that um, I, once I was even driving the, the car on the motorway and I started having suicidal thoughts, like... Mm. That scared me. I, just, I was just hoping to, you know, to, to, to just break down in the car or, you know, yeah. crazy things. And, and that's time I, as I was driving, I just typed positive thinking on YouTube. Uh, how to think positive or something like this. Uh, I was just, I, I just knew I have to just do something because it's crazy what's going on in my head. And I found Brandon Bouchard and his video... Uh, rewire your brain or something like this yeah. um, and since that I've watched all of his videos all of his books I've read uh, took some of his courses and, and started developing myself um, I also went into counseling and and as I was getting out of that depression and, and started loving myself and accepting myself um, I, I quit smoking, drinking, and and found that passion for hiking, running, enjoying myself. And again, psychology, uh, coaching, I started studying uh, counseling because at that moment, I didn't believe yet that I can do what I love and make money because right. I thought coaching, you know, how can you just enjoy yourself, help people and, and make money from it? Seriously, yeah. I just thought well, it must be scam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a very common belief out there. Exactly. And so, so it was quite of a journey. It took me five years to, to get to the point where I am now, where um, I, I run full time, fulfilling coaching business. And, uh, and, and that also inspired me my own journey to help other coaches uh, with the same because i believe if i was able to get to to that point then everyone else can that's beautiful yeah that's quite a story and i often we do have to go pretty far down in order to make that it's like a like a switch goes off where you make the decision to come back up right and it's uh, it's different for everybody how far we go down and how long we stay in the down but uh yeah, congratulations on making that decision, that choice, right? Thank you. You know what? Actually, recently I had a great insight during my own coaching session. I said to my coach, because I was struggling with celebrating my wins and how far I've come. And I said to her, uh, you know, I realized that actually 
the growth doesn't always come from those low moments. I used to believe that I have to go very low, hit that rock bottom in order to achieve something amazing, as I did with my life. And during that session, I had a huge aha moment that actually life is a joy already and the growth can come from, from just the consciousness of life being so beautiful and, and so joyful. <laughs> Clearly you have that. <laughs> it's shown you radiated. It's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned on your, um, I don't know how to look at your website. So I see the words courageous and authentic showing up. And those are two very powerful words. So I'd love if you could speak a little bit about how you landed in those within yourself and any um, advice you might have for other people who are, are looking for those values within themselves. Mm. Yes, that's very, that's a very good question. <laughs> it's a tough one. I mean, authenticity is, it's, um, it's like what your course is titled, right? Be you, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's hard to really dig into what is your authentic self. Like that in itself is a bit of a journey finding mm -hmm. that, right? Letting go of all the masks and identities and. Yes. You know, as I was going along with my life, I always wanted to, um, how would say that, be different be different than other people, just do my way, be my way, because I was just naturally born this way. But quite often I struggle to fully believe that what I have in myself is enough and that this is what people value. So especially as I was starting my business, I wanted to be certain way, like to be seen as a, you know, professional and super. Once I even had a photo session with you know, a laptop and that, that kind of things, and when I looked at these pictures, I thought, and it's not even me. I, I had the exact same experience. <laughs> exactly. You know, because everyone does it. Everyone's got pictures from the lap with the laptop and things like this. And I thought, I didn't use any single one, one picture because I was like laughing like crazy in that picture. But <laughs> other than that, and... Um, I was doing one of the courses um, with Marisa Peer, uh, mm -hmm. Rapid Transformation and Hypnotherapy. And you know what? When I do a course on personal development, I go all in. And there we have a, we had a community, a Facebook group, so we could share our insights, you know, how we are working through everything. And so I was very honest with my sharings because I, I noticed that it helps others yeah. to open up and to work things through. And this is so important to me to make a difference, to contribute and help others that I just put myself out there because I, I knew that they will they will grow if, if I show how I grow. But what happened? Within this quest, I shared the biggest crap about myself. I seriously, there was the topic of forgiveness and I shared, I shared that I had an affair and I shared how I hated myself. You know, th that was the time when I received the biggest love mm. from people. Wow. Just because I shown that I am not perfect. I am, I made mistakes, but I've learned to accept and love myself for that. And uh, that was the moment when people who I never even promoted to or, or nothing, they reached out to me to work with me because they wanted the same. They wanted to be themselves, accept themselves. And it, it happened that they had a business. So it also uh, really shown in their business. When, when you fully accept yourself, love yourself, then you can be authentic. Yeah, that's beautiful. And you, you provided a, a mirror of what can be had because you were being authentic perhaps, right? Showing people that it's okay. <laughs> yes, and, and they've seen what's happening. They, they notice that, Nobody is judging me. Nobody is criticizing me. People say, "Oh yes, I am the same. I struggle with this or that." Yeah. Um, and that's also courageous, I think, to to be able to step into it because it's risky. You yeah. know, sometimes you may say something that will not resonate with some people. Yeah. But I appreciate, I appreciate that because not everyone has to like me, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Only you have to like you, right? The rest follows. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. 
So I'd like to ask what living in alignment with your values looks like for you. Mm, you are asking such a good question. <laughs> can, can I stay for longer? <laughs> yeah, you bet. <laughs> wow. You know, I will tell you a funny story. When I had my very first coach, she asked me what are my personal values. That was about five years ago, maybe four and a half years ago. And I thought I wasn't quite clear on what the values really are. Yeah. And uh, so she said to me, you know, what's the most important to you? What is it that is really, really important to you? And I went back, came back to the session and I said, you know, and I don't like the answer, but you said to me to do not judge myself. But the most important thing to me is what other people think about me. Beautiful. How honest is that? And that, and, and that was really a bit like, oh my God, you know, yeah. I'm living my life this way. And that was the time when I uh, learned about values and specified them, uncovered and realized, okay, so this was what I was trying to live in alignment with, you know, to please everyone else around me. And then I w with my coach, I discovered how much it matters to me to make a difference and to contribute. And this is the most important value to me. And this is why I damaged everything in my life because I wasn't contributing. I wasn't making difference or helping others. And, and living in alignment means that I do it now and I do it not just in a daily uh, routine, but I do it, I do it wherever I am, whether I, coach people, whether I'm in business, whether I meet somebody in the shop, whether I take a course, I always think about how can I add value and help mm -hmm. others. And that sparks that, that joy uh, yeah. and satisfaction. So That's beautiful. And I think, you know, it's not everyone that takes the time out to look at their values, but it's key because that is where you, I think, where you really discover who you are fundamentally deep down yes yeah. yes yes yeah. and you can also realize that even if who you are right now is not who you want to be you can change it you can you, shift yeah yeah you know as soon as you realize that yeah, this is how i live this is who i am but this is not what i want yeah. <laughs> you can change that yeah Beautiful. And I, you know, for me, my business is naturally present and meditation is a big part of um, how I coach. And so I'm curious if you have a meditation practice or just curious, your answer yes. doesn't matter. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I wouldn't be able to be present without that. <laughs> and I love the name of your business, naturally oh, present. You. Yes. Um, it, it's funny because everything comes down to that uh, moment five years ago. Actually, the counselor, she recognized that I was so stressed. And mm -hmm. it was not only depression, but I was also burned out that time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and she pointed out to me uh, something about relax and, you know, to come up with ideas how to relax. I said, you know, I can add that maybe um, I could start running or maybe I should do some kettle weights or, or maybe, you know, more fitness class. And she was <laughs> like, but what about like a relax when you do nothing? Have you ever tried this? <laughs> you know, I, I don't even have a TV, so I don't, I didn't know what that means to relax doing nothing. Right. <laughs> yeah. And she took me through a um, five minutes guided meditation. Right. During that five minutes, I was just thinking, oh, wow, I just paid 50 pounds for this session and we are doing nothing. <laughs> and I've just, um, we are just wasting five minutes. That, that was my beginning with meditation. This is how challenging this was for me. Yeah. Um, but I didn't give up and uh, it became my daily practice. Uh, yeah. Without it, I wouldn't be where I am. Uh, it, it, it's gold. Yeah. And I also, yeah. <laughs> and I also love bringing meditation to the sessions. Yeah. You know, when you see your client in their head overthinking. Yeah. Okay, let's just take a moment and I like to guide them through visualization or, or little 
guided meditations so they can really connect to who they are. Yeah. Sometimes I've noticed there's a, 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 a moment or a feeling where you can see it's happened. It's mm -hmm. for me that it's, it's just, yeah, it's gorgeous. <laughs> It is. I'm curious, how was your, um, how is your practice with meditation and how did you find the meditation? It's a long story. Um, I traveled uh, for 14 years with my backpack all around the world and I met tons of different teachers. I did tons of different meditation On styles. your own? Uh, sometimes with someone, sometimes on my own. I left with a, a girlfriend from here, from Canada, and it was meant to be just one journey. And it, for me, it just never ended <laughs> for 14 years. It was pretty remarkable. And uh, I met a lot of different teachers and I learned a lot about self-development. And the ending of that journey, I ended up um, at a meditation center in North Carolina and I stayed there for three years. And in order to stay there, I had to do a six month meditation <laughs> program in order to become a teacher. And uh, six months meditating, you learn a lot about your mind <laughs> i'd love to say it was a beautiful blissful experience and there were definitely moments of incredible um expansion and bliss and and stillness but there were also moments that i would i would term hell because you go through everything right you meet yourself essentially and so now i you know i have amazing meditations and i have crappy meditations and i really try to bring that forth to really break down the myths around meditation because i think especially in the western culture we have all these ideas of what it's supposed to be like and if you don't get it often people just give up but really for me it's just about sitting with yourself and seeing and opening and being open and aware and conscious of the vibrations what's going on and being able to um not judge and how powerful in our world would that be if we could all stop judging things, right? So it's learning to witness and, and observe and uh, not get caught up in all of the, every thought that goes through your mind, not get caught up in all the news that you're reading, but to find that place where you can witness and observe. And yes. then you make a choice, right? You can choose how to respond or react to something. Yes, yes. I love what you said. All, all of that resonates <laughs> with me. Uh, and... I also believe that it's important not to just meditate, but to bring it to your daily life in a form of just checking in with yourself. What am I feeling right now? And how, I, how am I, how am I, <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah, beautiful. I, that one of the things I teach is, is um, closed eyed meditation. Absolutely. You have your time, but also meditating with your eyes open when you're interacting so that you are exactly, it's about bringing that natural awareness, that natural presence into your life, into your action, into your words, into your thoughts. And yeah, thank you. But this is supposed to be about interviewing me. <laughs> I'm interviewing you, I mean, not me. <laughs> but I really You're interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. You as well. So thank I would you. love it if you could share just a little bit um, about your coaching style. So when you work one-on-one -on -one with someone, what might they expect to happen with you? Magic. <laughs> yeah, lovely. Love it. Yeah. Um, when I work with people on one to one, I totally fully believe that everyone is able to find their own way to do things. So I don't tell people what to do. It's very uh, not direct style of coaching. Uh, so it's a lot of silence and helping people to just be and find what they want. Um, and I also trust my intuition a lot. So sometimes I will have an insight and I will ask, you know, there is something that is coming, a little story or exercise or even a guided meditation. Do you want me to, to share that with you? Do you want to try it? And it doesn't mean that this is right. It doesn't mean that my intuition is right. But I believe that it's coming from somewhere, whatever you want to believe, uh, God, higher power, universe, or intuition. And there is always the insight that they can have. Sometimes it may be that something triggered them. Sometimes it may be that the exercise is super powerful. Um, and since I started fully, fully trusting that intuition, it, it really brings magic. Wow. That's beautiful. And actually, just before you came on, um, I was speaking about coaching because some people still ask, you know, what's the difference between a coach and a counselor? And, and I, you know, one of the things I said is that one of the most important jobs um, 
of a coach is to create that safe and secure space and container for you to explore yourself. So it's really not about what the coach does. We do ask the questions and we push when needed, but it's really about creating that space for someone to, to investigate themselves and, and what they really want. And yeah. Yes. I don't know if you've noticed, but the more you work with somebody and also the, the better that relationship becomes, the more they are open to, to talk and you can just sit back and yeah. allow them just listen hold that space um and that's very very powerful yeah yeah beautiful awesome all right so um the other question i want to ask you is that sometimes you know coaching for for you and i we hear the word coach every day but for many people they don't hear it or they're just starting and so there's a curiosity around it so if someone is thinking about working with a coach but not quite sure um they haven't quite made that leap what piece of advice would you give to them mm, if they are not sure never done it before they've heard about coaches if they've never done it, I would just give them, I would just say, just, just try it. If you are somehow being drawn to it, maybe try, uh, ask somebody who resonates with you for a taster session. Yeah. Uh, you know, never, even if they don't offer it, if you, if you will ask, you will get it. Yeah. <laughs> and um, if you don't ask, you definitely won't get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's what I believe. Yeah, if you ask, you will get it. <laughs> I'm very curious about the words. So I would always say, you know, try and try and see if you like it or not. Um, that's important. And the thing is, you know, some coaches, everyone is different. Everyone's got different approach. Yeah. Um, and even, even I sometimes have people that really want me to tell them what to do because my clients are coaches and they see me that I, I achieved what they want to achieve. Uh, so, so it's also important to make it clear what you expect from coach and, and, and to, to, to make it clear for, for your clients because like, of course I, I do offer a mentoring or, or feedback support, but it's be in between the sessions. I yeah. don't tell somebody during the session or, you know, try this strategy, do this, this way. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. And you have a coach, you said? Oh, yes. Yeah. I wouldn't feel congruent if I didn't have a coach. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe. And mm -hmm. Has your coach changed or has it always been the same person? It is changing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As I was starting. I like to challenge myself. So when I was starting, I was choosing the coach uh, who's, good, who's re really like rules, structure, right. steady, slow. So the opposite of me. <laughs> okay. you know, small goals, breaking it down. And I'm like, dream big and, well, and, and just millions of ideas. Yeah. Um, and it was helpful in some ways because I've learned from different coaches, different techniques and, and tried different approach. Yeah. But then I realized, uh, because I also work with coaching supervisor, uh, because I do some associate work for government types programs. So they are giving us that kind of support. Right. And, and she pointed out to me, so relationship with people is so important to you and you don't have a great relationship with your own coach because oh. she kind of, you know, triggers you, challenges you. She, she, you've not got that relationship. And then it clicked and I decided, no, this time I'm going to find a coach who I really um, have a relationship in a way that I offer to my clients. And, right. uh, and that was about... I don't know, more than half a year ago. So I'm, I'm sticking with, with the same amazing coach. Awesome. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, anything else you'd like to share before I pop into our ending questions? Everything else. Oh, I could, you know, keep talking. <laughs> but no, I, I think, yes, yeah. I think we covered a lot. Yeah, we did. It's good. Uh, okay, I'm going to ask you the questions which I sent to you ahead of time. Um, what is the number one tool or technique that you practice daily to keep yourself in balance? I knew straight away what to say and I took <laughs> it with me to show you. Oh, a gratitude diary. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Somebody gave me this uh, little book 
exactly three years ago. You can see uh, three, three years I have. And every day I write something that I'm grateful for, pleased about, that, that went well. And that was life changing. It's so good. I love this book. Yeah, beautiful. I totally, yeah, I have one too, right, bes right beside my bed. <laughs> um, and what is the one habit that you struggle the most with that you find it to, hard to be consistent with? Cakes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, That's not if we so have... bad, is it? Yeah, not so <laughs> bad if you, if you eat four in one go when you're stressed. <laughs> yeah so sugary stuff mostly cake yes that's how i deal with stress and i managed to quit sugar completely uh in january and then two months yeah, not two months ago two weeks ago i just started eating a little bit a little bit and yeah yeah, yeah that's something to work on <laughs> that's not as bad as some but i hear you cake and is it the icing or is it the cake or what is it about cake um, it's all sorts. It's, it can be a chocolate, it can be a blueberry muffin, it can be, a, it's, a, yeah. it's the comfort food. Right. Now I'm getting hungry, so I'm going to change the topic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so let's pretend that you're sitting with yourself five years ago. That's just the number I have, but good for you as well. Uh, what's the one piece of advice you would give to yourself? Trust yourself. Trust yourself because you know, you know what's best for you. Oh, you know what? If I gave myself this advice 10 years ago or 15 years ago. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I do. <laughs> and what are you reading right now? What am I reading? The, what's it? It's Caroline Miss. Uh, oh. The Anatomy of the Spirit. There's something like that. The Anatomy of the Spirit, Spirit Anatomy. Um, it's, um, it, it's a book that connects healing and personal development and, and there is a lot of self-coaching in this book where you are working through some stuff that it, they explain that is related to chakras in your body um, and how you can heal yourself working through those chakras. I, I just find it so uh, interesting. It's, it's something I'm, I'm exploring. Yeah. Awesome. That sounds great. And the last question is, how can people connect with you? Ooh, there are ways. Um, they can <laughs> find me on Facebook. Um, <laughs> they would need to know how to spell my name. <laughs> right. I w for anyone listening or watching, I will post links. So. <laughs> or they can go to my website. It's Violetta with W, violetta.co.uk. Um, there is also a YouTube channel. Mm. Uh, they can have a look at the um, page about the program that we are starting on Monday, okay. uh, especially for, for new coaches. And uh, yeah, I am on, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, but I don't fully use them. <laughs> yeah. Facebook seems to be your jam, hey? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And the, um, the new Facebook group that I'm in, the... Um, Success, um, successful coaching for, I can't remember what it's called. Successful Coaches Club, right? Yes, exactly. Is, is that a private group or is it open? I can't remember. Yes, it's private group. Um, in May, we had it open for funding members. Um, it, it's a very intimate group for coaches that I know and trust. And slowly we are opening up for the world. So um, it's for coaches that are already coaching, that are experienced gotcha. and that want to learn and grow together. It's actually inspired because uh, I felt a bit lonely in my business. And it's nice to, um, to, to share our struggles as well as uh, celebrations with other coaches, connect. Yeah. And, and also together we can create so much more. So much more. And one of the things I really appreciate about your group is that it is small and intimate, whereas some of the other groups I belong to, which I, I get a lot of value out, it's very hard to have those deep connections because there are, you know, hundreds of people in it. So I think there's some real magic in what you're doing there. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and I hope to be joining you tomorrow morning at eight o'clock my time. So <laughs> yes. 
Yeah. So anything else or are we good here? What do you think your audience needs? What else do they need? I think we've covered it. I think we're good. Yeah. Yeah. They know what they need. Just listen to the heart. Exactly. You know what you need. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining me today and for bringing your authentic and courageous self and, you know, holding that um, space open, showing other people that it can be done because I think a lot of people can use that messaging right now. So thank you for the work that you do. Thank you so much. And thank you for doing this for people. It was pleasure to answer yeah. your questions such a great question <laughs> and this is the longest you and i've had to actually talk so that's great <laughs> wow all right well enjoy the rest of your evening and thank you again violetta thank you okay, i'm gonna stay on so i'll let you sign off bye for now all right so violetta over in the uk but she does work internationally so um as all of us coaches things are held virtually and online these days if you uh, resonated with the work that she does or a little bit about her journey then please feel free to reach out to her she is a fantastic person and a great coach and i all of the experiences i have of her in the different groups where we've connected is just um as you can see a bundle of uh, joy and enthusiasm and uh, it's a great gift to be sharing with the world so thank you for tuning into this episode and um, I will uh, peace out for now and see you on the next one have a glorious day enjoy what you're doing and remember to be naturally present ciao for now mm -hmm.